As the input image enters the architecture, it begins its journey through a carefully designed sequence of operations. In the first two stages of the backbone, we have regular convolutional layers that downsample the image, reducing its spatial dimensions while capturing basic patterns like edges and textures. This is followed by repeated C3K2 modules, which are blocks that refine feature extraction while maintaining efficiency. These modules emphasize both local and global patterns in the image, creating hierarchical feature maps. Shallow layers capture fine details, while deeper layers focus on broader, high-level features. The addition of the new A2C2F block builds on a previous module from its predecessor, which we'll discuss shortly. It introduces the area attention mechanism designed to enhance the model's ability to focus on the most relevant regions of the image. By splitting the image into subregions, it achieves better speed while maintaining high detection accuracy. Next, the neck comes into play. This stage takes the features from the backbone and refines them for object detection. Upsampling operations integrate finer details from earlier stages, combining these with deeper, more abstract features using concat layers. The A2C2F blocks in the neck, such as this one, act differently from previous ones in the backbone, and they do not use the area tension mechanism, as we'll see shortly. They act very much like C3K2 modules. These blocks merge features to further enhance detection accuracy. One last true C3K2 module completes the neck of the architecture. Finally, in the head, the detect module processes the refined features from all three scales. This module predicts bounding boxes, object classes, and confidence scores, effectively identifying the objects in the input image. The architecture you see here is shared across all YOLO 12 model sizes, whether you're using the nano, small, medium, large, or extra large models. However, you may have noticed that the specific tensor shapes follow a formula with the exact shape depending on the values for MC and W for each model size. Additionally, the number of loops in the C3K2 and A2C2F blocks depend on a value called D. While the generic architecture is helpful for calculating tensor shapes across different model sizes, I believe the attention mechanism is best understood through a concrete example, specifically by analyzing a particular model size. This lets us trace how an input image's shape is transformed into tensors of defined dimensions as it moves through the network, especially up to the area tension blocks, which are the focus of this video. In our case, we're using the nano model size, so let's take a look at the respective values for the nano configuration. This model has a D or depth of 0.5, a W or width of 0.25, and an MC or maximum number of channels of 1024. By substituting these values into the architecture, we can derive the actual tensor shapes. Here's what we obtain after calculating those specific shapes. We can also explicitly show the shapes of the cross-stage tensors to enhance clarity. These shapes are based on a generic input image of 640 by 640 by 3. However, to better analyze and visualize what happens inside the area tension blocks, we'll focus on a specific input image, this one. Its original size is 768 pixels tall by 1024 wide. A pre-processing step called letterboxing resizes it to 480 by 640, height by width, while preserving the aspect ratio. This resized image is what actually goes into the neural network. If you're curious how letterboxing works, I covered that in my YOLO 11 series, and the steps are exactly the same. So in this case, the input image shape becomes 480 by 640 by 3, and the corresponding tensor dimensions throughout the model will adjust accordingly. These are the exact dimensions for our YOLO 12 nano model with this specific input image shape. To better align with the format used by PyTorch, we will reorder the dimensions from height, width, channels, to batch, channels, height, and width. With that, we are ready to continue our exploration. As mentioned earlier, the innovations in YOLO 12 are best understood in comparison to the model it builds upon, Ultralytics YOLO 11. Both are state-of-the-art models, and choosing between them depends on factors like your dataset, speed requirements, and training preferences. 
let's now look at the key architectural differences between YOLO 11 and YOLO 12. Some blocks from YOLO 11, like the SPPF, Spatial Pyramid Pooling Fast Layer, and the C2PSA attention mechanism have been removed in YOLO 12. If you want to understand how those blocks work, I've covered them extensively in my YOLO 11 series. Other blocks, like C3K2, have been replaced with the new A2C2F area attention blocks, reflecting the shift in design priorities. It's worth noting that while the C2PSA block has been replaced, the new A2C2F block builds upon it, retaining much of its core attention mechanism while introducing a new area-based splitting strategy. Don't worry too much about the acronyms. Just keep in mind that several blocks and steps have been modified in this newer version. Let's move on to the next section, 